So now, so you met Kevin how long after the accident? That summer after the accident. And, um, so six months after or so. Uh, something like that. And um, so very, very early and after the accident. And I was just lucky. I was um, had agreed to be a mentor at a retreat for athletes. Um, the idea was to inspire um, action sports athletes to use their platform for social change. I hope that was a really beautiful idea. Our friend David de Rothschild, also a documentary um, maker, environmentalist, had in invited me, and I thought, that sounds cool, and um, went along. And um, it was actually funny, I had a, my agent at the time was like, when are you gonna do any work? I hope you fired that agent. I, I, we we don't work together any longer. But um, <laughs> uh, but um, I also when I went to Japan to make my film Tsunami in the Cherry Blossom, he, I got the same like earful. Like when are you gonna do any work? Heal yourself, fuck. But when are you gonna do any work? That's what he said. <laughs> nice. Anyway, I digress. But um, but I just met Kevin, and I was like, wow, and Adam, both of them, and I thought, wow. And I thought, obviously, like, oh my God, what an amazing movie this would make, what an amazing young man. But I also thought, oh, you know, I like making beautiful, verite, amazing too, cinematic you're too movies. Late. The I'm story's too late, over. the story's over. Right. But then I noticed something. I noticed two things. I noticed that um, everyone was filming everyone. And, um, uh, and I heard that even the crash itself had been filmed. And I thought, wow kind of like capturing the Freedmans or Senna kind of inspired him. And I thought, well, if we could get a hold of all that footage and do some amazing editor editing, and I got, had my amazing friend Pedro Cost, the amazing editor who I'd worked with on Wasteland and also some short things in mind already at that time. I thought, well, if we could have an amazing editor and really find that footage, we could build that story and make it as immediate as if I'd been there from earlier because there's gotta be a lot of footage I didn't realize quite how much. I mean, we got footage from 232 different places. Incredible, uh, right? And, and I have to say, um, on the second viewing, there are some moments, and I, I want to go back because I want to hear about that first conversation yeah. and how you decided to do it, but the first time that you see the crash and you hear his friend saying, hey, hang in there, Kevin, hang in there, and obviously it's from an interview afterwards, but the way that is seamlessly put into that footage and then brings you to the moment is just, it's crazy. So, um, you know, there's a lot of documentaries out there, but they're not always great films. And this is like extraordinary filmmaking. It's so extraordinary. But um, what... the um, best compliment. That is um, my favorite compliment. I'm right. I'm not <laughs> right about a lot of stuff. Um, but so this first conversation you well, had... Well, the second thing I noticed okay. was like... The second thing I noticed was that the story was not at all over because Kevin was all about getting back on a snowboard and all about keeping up with all his buddies. And, um, and all his buddies were like jumping off the rooftop, wakeboarding sideways off boats, et cetera. And just really fun to be around in that incredible way and like climbing, do you remember they're climbing on top, like doing like the cheerleading, just three people high stories. And I mean, just, I was frightened to be there, but completely, um, thrilled in the same way that when I watch snowboarding, part of me can't rip my eyeballs away because I love it so much and the other part of me can't rip my eyeballs away because I think it should be stopped because they're gonna hurt themselves, the stakes are so high. So I have that same kind of like, I can't make up my mind, it's thrilling, it's terrifying kind of feeling. But I noticed that Kevin wanted to get back and we talked about how, you know, with second impact syndrome, if he hit his head again, he could um, be in big trouble. And yet I saw that determination, that passion. And, and so I thought, my gosh, what is gonna happen? And um, and the story's not over yet. 